Hello there, beautiful person of planet Earth. How have you been doing? How was last week? I hope this week that's coming is one full of wins for you. And I am just so grateful. I'd like to remind you that I am just... My heart is full of gratitude for all the support I'm getting. YouTube is looking good. Spotify is looking good. Google Podcast is looking good. Like, I just love all the love I'm getting. And I keep saying... I am because you are. I be because you have been, you know? Thank you so much. I want to just like make sure you always understand how much gratitude I have in my heart for like the small safe community that we've created here where we just talk and there's no judgment. We talk the things that have been ailing us for years and we just don't have a place where we can have an outlet. And I am so happy. I am more than grateful to be that space for you and even for myself because I started this podcast actually as therapy for myself. I was just like, I'm going to put it out there because I don't like write journals anymore and we'll see where it goes. And honestly, I am grateful. And I'd like for this podcast to grow. I have merchandise coming. It's not here yet. Please wait for it. But before that, if you'd like to partner with me, because I tr trust the numbers are looking good. If you'd like to partner with me on this podcast, I'm more than open to all my contacts uh, description. All my contacts are in the description. So just reach out to me. I'll be more than happy. Also, I'd like to remind you every Thursday, I put out a prompt so that you know what we're talking about in the next week so then you can contribute and also in the comments you can get to interact with other people who found a home in a stranger's story right that's my description on youtube i hope i hope i hope it's giving deep <laughs> Anyway, welcome to another episode of the In All Honesty podcast. My fabulous name is Oliver Rao, out with the old, in with the new, right? A description that only, only works. That's a saying, a saying that only works for toxic corporate companies that want to get rid of the old people so they can introduce new policies to exploit the new people. <laughs> Anyways, I don't like violence. I asked you earlier on on my socials that what is an experience you've had in 2023 that just gave you 1823? You're just like, have we ever evolved? Did we ever even try to evolve? And I'm not just saying 23, 2023 specifically. I'm just saying the now and the then. What is an experience you've had that just took you back in time? Like you just felt like... Oh, I don't think we are progressing and it can be frustrating. So I'll start with some of the responses that I got directly to my prompt and I promise it's triggering. <laughs> so um, an 1823 experience that you've had in 2023, you are young, still living at home with your parents. So we, so we will pay you less because you don't need the money. <sighs> I am feeling triggered because before I became the person that I am right now, who knows what interviews should look like and what's appropriate, what is not, I answered very inappropriate questions in interviews earlier in my 20s. And I remember this one particular interview at Samantha's Bridal where um I was asked, first of all, there's, there's weird questions. I'll just tell you some of them. I was asked um if you were to spend money on a dress, how much are you willing to spend money on a dress for? Like the m maximum amount of money you're willing to spend on a dress. I think I said 4,000 Kenyan shillings at the time, which was 2017. And that was a lot of money considering that I actually had to scrum, like just try and get the 70 shillings that I was going to the interview with. 4,000 for me was like, if I spend that on a dress, I don't know, probably I'm going to get paid for wearing that dress. I don't know. But at the time, that was one of the questions. The other question was, where, what neighborhood do you live in in Nairobi? I don't know why that's a question you'd ask in an interview that does not necessarily concern you reporting. Like, it's not like a store manager where we have to see what store can we assign you to so that's closer to home, that's convenient for you. No, this is just an office that's situated in one place. Where I live, is it none of, is it any of your business? That, um, the other thing I was asked, where did I get the necklace I was wearing? I was wearing my mom's pearl necklace and I said it was my mom's. Um, there's another weird question I was asked. Oh, where do you live? Where do you live was tied to, do you live by yourself? And I said, yes. And the interviewer was like, mm, how are you affording to live by yourself? 
And I just said, I am affording. And uh, th- there was a comment that was made. One of the interviewers said, you look well cleaned up, like you're living with your parents. And I just said, no, I reiterated, I'm living by myself. So this idea <laughs> of trying to gauge people's, it has nothing to do with the job. I don't even feel like they really cared for what I had to offer. It was a lot of who am I? What sort of person am I? What like It was like to cluster me in a particular economic, I don't know, category. I felt so. Now looking back, but at the time I got the job on the spot and I should have known that was a red flag as well. But these are some of the things you should pick out in interviews. Um, a place that wants to actually hire other people based on this criteria, like you still live with your parents. You, they don't care so much for what you have to offer. They just care so much for who needs the money more. Are you running a charity organization or do you genuinely want to hire talent for your company? So if you see this in an interview, ha, ah, run, Murife, Murife, do not stop. Take off. <laughs> because that's usually a huge red flag. And if this is the criteria, if you ever pick this in an interview, even if you get the job, you're better off not working with them. I know sometimes you're desperate. You might take it for the money. You won't stay there. It's gonna. It's about to get disrespectful. Um. Someone else says, "Ati atakama hutaki kuelewa basi zaka moja tu unipe." This is directly loosely translating to English. This is something that a lot of women are told. I think African women, but I will speak for Kenyans. I have been told this as well. Um. You don't, if you don't, if, if at, you don't want to get married, at least, at least yeah, for your own sake, for everyone's sake, for society's sake, can you at least have one child? And if you don't want to take care of it, have one child and give it to me. And this is a sentiment that comes from men and is a sentiment that is shared by older women who actually want grandchildren. And you really do not care what conditions this child is brought into. You don't care for the welfare of this woman. Is she ready for marriage? Is she ready to commit? Her body is going to go through changes for nine months if she gets pregnant. Is this something she's ready for? Is it something that's in her plan? None of We don't care. If you're not going to get married, at least get a child for heaven's sake. Is it 2023? Is it really 2023? And you'd be surprised how how common these statements are. You'd think it's something you'll come across once, twice. No, you're about to come across it probably every single day of your life. <laughs> um, someone else says, government saying that increasing the cost of living is good for the economy. I don't know how this relates to our 1823 2023 experience is it because the government said this a while back and in 2023 still doesn't make sense or are you saying it in the sense that it's we know it's blatantly a lie i i didn't get the context of this per se um so i'll probably chat you up and see where your head is at with this Someone else says, why are you buying property? Wait for a husband so that you invest together. Women, assemble. Young girls who are not married, assemble. Because you will not hear the end of it if you dare. If you dare try to do nice things for yourself. And I remember this particular... Man, I feel I feel secondhand embarrassment for for like older aunties i told you i will crawl on hot gravel before i take advice about marriage and relationships from older african aunties because i remember when i moved out of home and of course i was cast out for a bit but when people started like fbiing and trying to check what's happening in her life is was popping some of the people who like got a chance to come to my place it it wasn't much but I had tried, like I, I got a set of plates, got a set of cups, I uh, bought a TV, bought a carpet, like, you know, the things you just need to like, starting out easy, because you don't even have the money yet. And I remember a lot of people who'd come to my place would exclaim, they'd be surprised that you're actually furnishing the house, you're actually buying stuff. And there's one person who just told me outrightly, why are you buying all these nice things? What happens to them when your husband comes? 
And I tried to pick their brains. I was just like, uh, wouldn't even if even if I got married, wouldn't be a, wouldn't it be a flex for us to have two of things? If me and my whatever, if you'd believe my husband will come and swoop me off my feet, if he came, then we'd have two fridges, then we'd have two sets of couches, then we'd have two beds, then we'd have like everything's gonna be double. Why? 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 Am I just going to live in a house with a small mattress and a carpet and a plastic cup waiting for my husband to come so that I can start investing? What happens now while this husband has not come? And what if this husband never comes? Then what happens then? Do I just never have to get good things or do I just live like a pauper because I'm waiting on this has gosh it makes no sense to me but it is very common and I swear you will hear it in 2023 um someone else says you are chasing away men with this lance you keep buying and a car and the car you have <sighs> so you're buying land and you you've bought a car and they feel and the instead of someone celebrating you the first thing they feel is you're going to chase away men. What, what are you doing? Like, girl, I saved up money to buy these things. I've secured my future. If by accident, I even got pregnant right now and uh, son of Adam said, I'm out. I have, I have, I have backup here that I can, can assure this child of a decent upbringing. What do you mean? I'm chasing away men. And then on this point, why are you taking your girls to school if they're not to do anything for themselves? Why are you out here stressing about school fees for your daughters if you just want them to now grow old and be? And the person who sent this, I know them personally and I actually know where they went to uni. And I'm thinking, you you genuinely invested primary school, secondary school, took them to the university, which is the most expensive of um, education levels, took them to the university. And after that, they're supposed to wait upon a man. Why, why, why did they go to school? What, what was the reason for us daughters to go to school? I don't get, I don't get it. And I'm getting triggered and I'm getting mad. <laughs> um, someone else says, why are old people why are old people who know absolutely nothing about me negotiating my dowry? Um, this one, I feel like I will do a podcast episode on its own where we can just discuss the idea of bride price, dowry. I understand it in the African sense of things, like in the African traditional sense. But in the new age, it's giving confusion. I don't know where... It's, it's really giving confusion. It's giving a lot of, we want to benefit a lot of commercialization of this particular dowry thing. And also, what I've noticed, I am sorry. I'm sorry to my sisters. I'm sorry. I'm sorry because all of you have had like this events. What I noticed is that when now it was time for like introductions, dowry sessions, when the whole shebang was happening before the wedding, this is the first time in my life I was seeing uncles I have never seen in my life. Somehow I'm supposed to be related to them. And why is it these people who I've never seen? Why is this people who I do not know? Oh my goodness, guy. And there's so many, there's so many levels to when it comes to diary because I've heard of an argument where someone said, you cannot, I don't know what, I don't know the arrangement behind dowry. I don't know how much amount of money is enough for dowry. But usually I had an argument where they said, oh, she's gone to school. She's done her master's. So that's more dowry. Like the more, the the higher the level of their education, the higher the level of the girl's education, the higher the dowry. Are you selling her to the highest bidder? I Gosh, dowry, dowry, please allow me for season four. I'll start having guests. We'll discuss dowry as an entire episode on its own. Um, uh, Someone else says, hey, baby girl. So I discovered your podcast a few months ago and I have listened to all the episodes. Imagine a person asking you, how, how are you broke and you are a woman? Shut Caleb. 
<sighs> yeah. Why did you go for Caleb? I love name calling. And by name calling, I mean random names like Bartholomew. <laughs> I love the get out of here, Bartholomew. Yeah. But anyway, you went with shut the fuck up, Caleb. Um, yes. First of all, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you got you. I love how when people discover my podcast, they be binging from season one to season three. Season three is where you've accessed a bit of quality. Season one and season two, we were, mm, mm, but I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. First of all, um, this, this statement, you're a woman, you're not broke. I hate it so much because again, another episode, I am not the kind of girl who receives money from men. I'm not the kind of girl who attracts men who have money. I have never had that experience in my life. And can you imagine navigating life where people think you can't be broke because you're a woman? And I'm just thinking, how the hell can you be so overshadowed by something that is so popularly believed and genuinely you have never experienced it when i say i am broke i am broke i'm not thinking of money coming from anywhere i'm not even thinking i don't know where this notion came from because some people assume that women just get money from random men are you serious and how can how is this something we're talking about in 2023 when women are going to school and women are going for interviews and women are bagging jobs and women are doing four, 400 jobs a day. Women are paying their own rent. Why are we working in the same office? Why are we putting the same effort to do the same jobs, to earn the same money, but somehow you feel that the pressures that you're facing, I'm not facing them. We do face different pressures. We do face different challenges as women and men. But you cannot invalidate my lack of money just because I have a pussy. So if you're born with a punani, it's an ATM machine. I don't know. Um, sorry, I, 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 I caught myself in a UK accent there. I'm watching a lot of shits and gigs right now. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> um, someone else says you should quit your job and take care of your husband and kid. I had to quit marriage. Power to you, girl. Power to you. And are we ready? Are we ready for the conversation? Luo women. I am Luo. So I speak from a point where I have seen Luo women. Can we talk about the number of houses running on the backs of Luo women in like predominantly Luo areas, the Kisumu, Nyanza as a region. The idea of women just taking up the entire family structure and it's a lot. But anyway, yes, this is very, this is something very common. Once someone is married, women are usually encouraged to just let go of their jobs and nurture the home. And that puts a very imbalanced I don't know what, guys, me, I don't know. Do, can you see, men, men, please talk to me. Can you see the, the, the state of the economy? Can you see it? Why would you not want a two-income household? Why would you want a compromise on a two-income household? And apart from that, why do we want to assume that a woman is innately born with the with, uh, I don't know, their purpose in life is to nurture. Nurture the family, take care of the family. No, I'm a boss bitch. If I want to go back to work, I should be able to go back to work. I might be passionate about motherhood and I still want to be a mother and still have a family. And, but I don't want to abandon my career as well. Two, two, two truths can exist at the same time. I can still be a mother and I can still go back to work. And if you want me to abandon everything... You want me to abandon my job and work at home? What is that you're scared of? What is why why can't we just split the home as well and have it functioning for both of us? Both of us take up pick up the slack at home and both of us are able to work. I don't I don't understand this quit your job nonsense in 2023. Not in this economy of unga being 100 and 250,000. Not in this economy. I don't see how you don't want an a two income household. And I'm glad you quit the marriage cuz then that, that will put an imbalance again on your 
on your relationship, when someone has financial authority over one other person, this other person is never secure. You can only you can only rely on them extending you grace and treating you well and being good people. But once you don't have the money and you have to rely on your partner for money, that changes a whole dynamic that we are not ready for podcast episode. Um, someone else says, Mwanamke ni kuvumilia. I left immediately. Again, we're going with the marriage advice that is still coming from African aunties up until today. You need to persevere. People who are... Reco- <laughs> Whoever scripted and produced that movie called, is it Prayer Room? Things gonna be happening in your marriage, in your relationship, and you're supposed to go back, go on your knees and pray. I understand. Yes, please go on your, by all means, go on your knees and pray. Go to couples therapy. Do whatever you can to salvage the re- relationship if you still feel, if both of you still feel like you need to fight for it. But I'm not about here to cover all the disrespect that's about to be served to me because... <laughs> I'm trying not to get divorced or I'm trying not to be, what else? If you're not divorced, because women who get divorced get shamed. If you're single, usually it's the number of people you are dating that you get shamed with. So if you are dating this person, you'd rather even end up in a Kamui stay than end up broken up because you're... It's going to be embarrassing. They're going to ridicule. The village will ridicule you. (laughs) I gotta stop with all this. But yeah, no, do not persevere. I always say I draw the line at disrespect. This could be the reason why I, I, a relationship of mine has never seen an anniversary. This could be the reason why um, I've been in jobs. I've been I've worked in places for 10 days max. I've, I've worked in places for two months and left. When disrespect is served, I'm out. And I grew up in the town where they train athletes trust i will run (laughs) um someone else says this is out of topic but how did you start your podcast what does it take to start one so i have a handbook that i am selling i will put it out so that you can buy and just start out just see what to do with podcasting and i can also offer consultation to help you with that because i realize a lot of people are asking this and it's very person to person i don't feel like giving a blanket cover the handbook just helps you know uh, where what are some of the things that you will interact with when you get into the podcasting world but if i also consult you you'll just be able you'll be able to tell me where you are what sort of phone are you using what equipment can you afford what is the vision like that's what i'm offering right now but i will get back to you with this okay there's quite a number of you who've asked and i am more than happy to have us join this podcasting space um someone else said yes i just spoke to someone about it juicy or oh, you spoke to someone about the 20 the 1823 things that are happening in 2023 but then you didn't go ahead and tell me what you were talking about you just told me you were talking to someone it's okay um someone else says get kids while financially struggling hata sijiwezi but no add another mouth dumbest thing i've ever heard yeah we are out here eating girl dinner, girl dinner, girl dinner. And you're telling me to get a mouth to feed, another mouth to feed. I'm try- I'm living, you know, with the state of the economy right now, <laughs> you could be getting paid a good sum of money and still be living hand to mouth. In this economy, in the age of men saying, that's not my child, we cannot, you cannot possibly get pregnant. We did it standing. In the age when men say, that cannot be my child, we did it one time. You really, you really, you really want me to get a child who I'm not even assured will be. <laughs> Guys, I'm tired. I'm tired because we know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, Someone else says... You are so young and not married with such a big job. Unapeleka wapi pesa? Where am I taking my money? I am young with a big job. I'm sorry, where were you when these jobs were, when people were carrying out interviews? 
because I've had, okay, not the same experience. I've had a similar experience where there was a new HR. Let me tell you, that company has gone through the shits of shits. But anyway, I was there through it all. And there's a new HR who came in. And I think she was going, I don't know whether she went through payroll, but I know this, this woman was not two weeks old. She was barely two weeks old before she called me in. And it wasn't like a meeting meeting, like Olive, we need to talk. No, she pulled me and she was like, Olive, I need to talk to you about something and took and guided me to the kitchen, went ahead to ask me, how come you're the only girl in this company and you're the youngest and you're earning the most? And first of all, I'm thinking, first of all, you're a woman. So I don't know what nonsense of a question this is. Number two, your HR, meaning this practice, why am I privy to information of what other people in the office are earning now? Why am I privy to this information? Doesn't that make you quite incompetent? And number three, if I were to at all explain myself, if I were to at all explain myself to you, who did I come to this company with? They put out um, announcements for job vacancies. I applied, came in for the first interview, gave my quotation for what I want, came in for the second interview. They made a counter offer. We negotiated. It was down on paper. My contract was sent to me. In this entire process, where am I involved with the other eight women, with the other eight men who work in this office? But also the other thing I started thinking, I was like, yo, the way these men are dingy, the way the, their asses are ashy, these men were out here doing the most. And they were, they were booty licking foreigners left, right, and center. They had no backbones. They would, these men were disgusting. Like you'd see someone behave a certain way in the office. They were always trying to put somebody under the bus. They're always trying to frame somebody for something. They're always trying to bully me as the only woman who was in that office. These men were just low. And I was thinking, y'all are doing all this and you have someone calling you their pillar of strength at home. You have someone waiting for you to come back and they call you daddy back at home. And you guys are doing all this, all this. When I'm telling you, can we go and can we go and ask for better conditions? Can we go and ask for better working conditions? You guys do not want to do that. You mean all these things that I am fighting for, like salary reviews and all that, you don't even care to fight for them and you're earning less than I am earning and what I'm earning is not even ideal. I'm just here for the money because I don't want to be indebted. I want to pay rent. In an ideal world, I'm going for more money. I'm still looking for opportunities that are giving me more money. How the hell do you have such audacity and you're earning literal peanuts? Yeah. Gave me a very, very different picture. I didn't need that picture, but now I had it. A very different picture of how low this man was. I literally would walk into that office and just think, oh my God, I... I, I shudder at the thought of the women who had to have these ones. <laughs> but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, someone else says, um, Ooh, we don't get me started on the corporate bolt. Guys, <laughs> are we ready for corporate? Are we ready for corporate? Corporate is an entire episode of its own. I can't wait for season four because we I, I'll start having panels over. I cannot wait for season four because we'll get to discuss juicier things and we'll get to have now like a variety of opinions and not just me literally judging people for a whole hour. <laughs> Um, I will check on my camera because it embarrassed me last time before we get to now the slightly longer, um, what is it called? Responses that I got from the prompt. Okay, okay, let's get it. Um, slightly longer responses I got from my prompt. Hey, Olive, he nayo huwa naambiwa kila sa, that a woman can't be responsible, make money and live on their own without a man or else na asha wo. Anyway, so I'm wondering, why did I go to school and struggle with all that if I am to be someone's trophy? The exact question I was asking. You're told a woman can't be responsible, make her own money and live on their own. If not, if that woman is doing that, then she is a lady of the night. 
She's a harlot. She be a prostitute. She, she as shall war, she be selling out flesh. That is what is believed. And this is 2023. If you think I'm talking about, if you think this is the episode of, you thought we were still talking about things that happened in 1823. No, we're talking about things that are happening in 2023. This is people's mentality now. And she's asking, why the hell did I go to school? I should have just been born and I should have just been chilling because chemistry was a bitch. I should have just been chilling. I wait, I get to 2021. Ugh. Let me go and cook cookies on YouTube. It's going to be a good time because I'm someone's trophy. Huh, I'm feeling triggered. Um, Someone else says, yo, when I decided to go for further studies, I was asked why I am doing that when my fellow age mates are having kids. <laughs> that took me back to my parents era when all a woman was supposed to do was give birth and stay at home to take care of children. I love your podcast so much. Oh, love hearts, love hearts, love hearts. Um, thank you. <laughs> You're going for further studies. Literally, the pride of African parents is for their kids to go and look for more knowledge outside there and interact with the exposure that is the world. But no, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that when your age mates are, po are popping out kids? Like, do, do, do this popping of kids. That's, that's what we want. It's disrespectful. It's very disrespectful. But here we are. I hate it. I hate, and I like that you laughed it out. You laughed, you laughed it off because it gets to a point where you just can't deal with it. Because even me, I've gotten to a point where people, I hear some people's opinions and I just laugh it off because I am not ready to start taking you from the gutter to come here. I don't even, I can't even dig. My hands are soft. I can't even dig. I'm a 2023 babe. We don't slave. I can't even dig to get you out of the gutter. So yo, <laughs> um, someone else says, Hey, Olive, I was told by my boss. I can't work for him. If I'm not his girlfriend, Ati, he'll be jealous seeing me with other men. So, so as to protect his emotions, I got fired. I'm still recovering. Imagine this is a guy who said he loved me so much. After I rejected him, after I rejected him, that's when the love disappeared. Men will leave you in the desert without water. Yo. But this is very, um, I saw this and I was super triggered because I told her, first of all, this is actually sexual harassment. This could be reported to HR quite easily because you're using your authority to like gain favors. You're probably angling it different where you're just like, I love you. I'm trying to protect my emotions. Where? At a place of work. Can you go get your emotions somewhere else? <laughs> yo, yo. And the audacity to, I don't, I don't want to see you with other men in the office. It will make me jealous. So just to protect myself, I'm going to fire you. Ah, girl, go home. Please, girl, sleep. Wake up. We'll find other ways of making money because this just... <sighs> ah. Can you call out... Men, can you call out your fellow men? And women, say his name because what is this? Like, say both their names because I've heard of sexual harassment from women in authority also to like younger men. It's not easy. Call out sexual harassment because I don't know what else to call this. Um, someone else says, I've been a victim of, um, she's a woman earning this much. She's sleeping with the boss. You're, <laughs> I am trying to find the words for it. This is so common. There's even things like me. I was accused of sleeping with the boss for the tiniest of things. Let me tell you, um, you see how, um, there's a way your boss but your boss knows your personalities around Lake, right? So there's this gig that came. It's not a gig per se. He knew of a friend who wanted a certain service. Like, yo, I'm doing, I'm doing social media work for you. But you know, Olive is a bomb ass copywriter. So you're like, oh, there's a friend of mine who needs a copywriter. Can you do that for him? And I was like, yeah, cool. It's quick, easy money. So they link me up and I get that job and I do it for him and he's quite impressed and we move on. But when this story, and it was such an open thing that it was done in public. It was done in an office where we were all seated and 
this man got a call, this, my boss got a call and he was like, oh yeah, Olive, that's my friend who wanted the copywriting. This was done in front of everyone in the office, but there was a rumor that went around. How come she, how come he only gave Olive that, that opportunity? It means they're sleeping together. Um, even if I were to sleep around, I would sleep around for pocket change. You really, I'm hard. But anyway, yeah, you're earning this much. You must be sleeping with the boss. That's their problem. You also go sleep with the boss and earn that much. Leave me alone. Cause what is this? Um, someone else says, Hey, Olive, some time back, my cousin was building his Simba during holidays. He used to stay in one of the houses at my grandmother's and he has a family with three kids. On the eve, um, on the eve he was to build the house, one of my aunts approached him and told him that they should go and rent some place to stay for the night because there is no way he can move from his grandmother's place and go into his house, considering that both are his considering that both his parents had passed away. The irony is that my aunt who approached him is a praise and worship leader. Is those church <laughs> It's those church ones. Anyway, my dad intervened and they did not have to leave and the house was built. So this is like those weird old traditions because something related to this is I had a relative who just the other day was building her own house. So she bought a piece of land and was building her own house that she calls now her country home. And just when it was headed towards finishing, a random friend of the family, they call themselves friend of the family. They're supposed to be aunties to all of us apparently so the auntie comes and says um you cannot move into your house without a man so you will need it's as if you ha what is it called you have to consummate in the house before you move in so a single woman cannot just move into a house she's built by herself and i'm like where are you gonna get a random man this my relative is not dating this my relative hasn't been in the scene for a while she's not seeing anyone where and what is this consummation anyway um the family actually came to the rescue and was just like I, I, in 2023 what is this we are doing but yeah these are some of the ridiculous things and what is even funny what makes it laughable is these people who are so strongly etched in christianity and religion rather it could be any religion but they are also very strong believers of traditional african practices i'm like pick a side what is what is all this but anyway we are dealing with a lot and sometimes you're just like really can it be 2023 um, I got one letter. Let's get to it. Hey, Olive, Sijui Tuanze Wapi. When letters start like this, I know, I know. I think we should use Nyako's sound with Usi to Rudisha 1900. I can't even explain why people are not open to change in this century. We were having some conversation with my mom. I don't know where the marriage topic came from. And she was like, you know, your younger siblings will come to visit you. So you must get a good wife so that your brothers can follow your luck. And mind you, hata siezi jilisha. Here comes the, the point again. I cannot feed myself. You're telling me to get a wife and kids. I am. I just got angry and shouted Mimi Siowani in mother tongue and then she went um and then she went on pesa yako utapea malaya basi So if so this money that I'm earning peanuts this money that I have just because I don't have a family you think I'm spending it on prostitutes Wow wow mother wow <laughs> hey i was so infuriated and just said sawa hey, kuliko nikai namtu. i'm so much not buying the marriage agenda from anyone whether it's for cultural reasons or what i am so much invested in my personal space which which no one should compromise I agree with you. That conversation just took me to hunting and gathering age where marriage is not optional. I pity those guys for real. Living by the societal code and for its expectations is awkward. It reminds me of my old queer friends who are in who are into marriage to hide that authentic part of themselves and they are like imagine utafika your age we, well imagine utafika your age while well, I'm queer. Guys Queer 
men hiding in marriages. No, actually not. I'll not say men. I'll just say queer people who have hidden behind marriages. The st statistics are staggering. Staggering. Let me tell you an episode. Um, well, I'm queer. Something they learn on their own. Junaeza Itiwa Council of Elders. We, we, I've had an intervention for way less. You'll be fine. <laughs> I'm tired of typing a bag. The older generation, a big number, is not ready to embrace change and the, um, at the slightest, so some things are better left unsaid. Allowing them, to, uh, allowing them to learn on their own is better for me. People should embrace diversity in everything because individual belief system is unique. Say hi to future Mama Olive. She's the most loyal of fans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, future Mama Olive. Oh, okay. So there are people who actually know it. Mama Olive, we're all waiting for Mini Olive. Anyway, um, I get what you're saying. It's very difficult to change an older person's mentality. And that's that I've said a lot about um, my parents. My, my mom is 60 now. My dad is 71. And I usually feel like sometimes trying to explain to them all these new phenomenons that have come up or rather things that we're working with right now, it's a bit much for them. So it's okay. Let them live in that bubble they live in. It still works for them. They still stay alive. They still stay happy. We, on this other hand, will not try to change them as well. We will just live in our own space as well and choose our own happiness. And every generation will be phased out with its own toxicity and its own healthy practices. So it's okay. You don't I always say I really cannot use energy to explain to people things. I'm just like, mm -mm, no, I'm not placing my energy there. No way. So that's a good way of dealing with it. You're saying you're queer. They don't even know yet. Don't you even dare because um, queers, like queer in, I don't know, where are you from? Being queer in Africa is not safe. So even coming out to your parents, it's not like this fairy tale, whatever that you see in movies. So yes, they'll find that out for themselves. For marriage, I also am with you a hundred percent. And I've always said I'm not against marriage. We can get married, but can everyone keep the house, please? Unless you're willing to, to build a house with two wings where everyone can keep to their wings. <laughs> so I do understand it, the older generation changing their mind is very difficult. It's okay. Just let them live as they are. You also keep your calm. A lot of times I don't get to speak when I'm at home because my thoughts are very unconventional. So when I get home, I just chill. I see how people live. I know I'm going to go back to my house where I've set my own rules and standards and I live peacefully ever after. And um, that brings us to the end of all the responses that we got. There's some, there's some, what is it called? There's some engagement going on under the prompt also on our socials. So you can also follow up there and see. Um, I had some few notes for me. Some of the things that are happening in 2023 that are giving 1823 vibes. Um, hey, let me tell you this. I don't know if it's if you've heard about it. It's very common African culture, and I hope it's something that we can get to break the cycle. Uh, parents saying that this is the money or this is the things that I worked for. You cannot take mine. You work for yours. What were you working for? This your entire life. What were you working for? If not to secure your children's future and not to make sure that you your future is also secured so that your kids in return are also secure. I thought that was the whole dynamic, but you find a lot of parents are just like, no, no, I'm not going to write a will. I'm not going to leave things to my kids. They're going to get spoiled. Like, uh, what were you working for? This idea of holding on to money. And in my prompt, I mentioned there are people I have seen who are seated on their deathbed and they said, I'm, I've worked so hard for this money. I'm not going to write a will. I'm not going to give my last wishes. I don't know if it has to go to, to fucking ruin. Let it go because I, I don't know. We are so resentful towards all that we've worked for, even for things that we can hand over to our kids. So yo, that's, that's just something I see in 2023. And I'm just like, yo, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I've talked about my interview at Samantha's Bridal. I also had it in my notes. Basically, weird questions. Note the red flags. 
if you really need the money get in there and strategize your exit if you you feel like you have options leave that job you'll get something else um guys I have seen the most from the time I was 18. I started working when I was 13, actually. From the time I was 13 to now that I'm 31, as being a single woman working in corporate is hectic. Is he the office politics. And also being, at the time, me, I didn't know I was asexual and I also didn't know, and also I didn't know how comfortable I am with celibacy. So I've always just not been in the sex or romance world. And not having, that world doesn't that world not existing is such a pain point for people. A lot of people are just like, what is Olive up to? In one office, Safaricom Eldoret, I was actually rumored to be lesbian because no one just knew what was going on in my life. In the same office, I was also at some point rumored to like people's husbands. I just like snatching people's husbands. That's why I'm not finding someone to date on my own. I really did not give any information about what I am doing. And even if I were to give you information, I'm literally not seeing anyone. I am not having sex. I am not interested. I am not searching. Why is this information? Why are you feeling insecure about me not having this part of my life? Why, why is it now a topic that people are sitting in a lounge, grown-ups over 35 year olds, you're seated in a lounge discussing a 20 something year old and why she does not have a boyfriend or why you've not caught her in a compromising situation. Guys, I do not understand. I'd like, don't you have better things to do with your life? Um, someone else, oh, sorry. <laughs> I keep saying someone else. Oh, I was given a new role. I've talked about it. It wasn't a role per se. My boss linked me up with someone else for um, a side gig. It was a whole issue. Um, inheritance. Guys, I will do a podcast. Maybe I'll have other communities come in and tell us about their experiences. But as Lua women, inheritance is quite tricky. It's, a, it's Gosh, that's an episode on its own. Inheritance, like giving women property, is, is something that is... <sighs> Woo! It's not 2023 yet. We are into eight, in 1823. When it comes to inheritance and like just handing over property or wealth to women in our community, this is a no. Um, or, or single woman, just navigating life as a single woman. <laughs> navigating life as a single woman, I need to be paid. I need to be paid like hardship allowance. Single women just need to be paid hardship allowance because you're... Ah, and of course, the last thing that we've talked about, forgiving disrespect in marriage, um, in most situations, not even just in marriage, even in places of work where you find you're being told, oh, you cannot speak up at your birth like that. First of all, that's a man. And there's this, um, at home, there's this dynamic of raising boys different. And I remember there's this time my cousin sent me for water to wash hands and I turned to him and I was like, you're my, you're my age just because you're, um boy i should go get you water to wash your hands and i remember a couple of people were mad but i didn't care if you want to wash your hands walk up to the sink um if i'm going to bring water for people to wash their hands it's unless they are guests and we have to make some sort of arrangement or the older men that's fine in our in our in our whatever in our tradition and cultures the the older men we get to wash their hands Sometimes, not all the time. These days, they walk to the sink. It's not all the time. When the water dynamics is different, it, when the guests are around, is when you see where, if whether they should have, whether you should bring them water to wash their hands. But that dynamic of, I'm a boy, we are age mates. We grew up playing together. We showered outside here in a basin and got dry by the sun together. And now, we are older. We are like in uni. And you think just because you're a boy, I should be at your service? I mean, that was wild to me. <laughs> um, I think that is all. That is all. There's something I mentioned in my prompt that, that will come with the cultural traditions that we've had. Did you know that uh, a, a single woman cannot be buried inside the family's compound? Because in traditional African, that was that woman was a disgrace and would bring bad luck. It's something that's still happening in 2023. So if I were to die right now, I wouldn't be buried. Okay, my parents are a bit progressive, but I wouldn't be buried inside my family's compound. I should be buried outside. 
because yeah an unmarried woman does not belong to anyone because at a certain age you stop belonging to your parents and you should belong to your husband and if that husband does not exist then you are a child of nowhere you encourage the cowardly dog same was ups. <laughs> anyway, that brings us to the end of another podcast episode. Um, experiences of 1823 that we are having in 2023. It takes us back. We're just thinking, are we progressing really? Because I think for me in that, in those moments, I'm usually like, I, I feel literal heartbreak. I feel a tightening in my chest where I'm like, I thought we were progressing. I thought we were moving towards the right direction. I thought that finally we can start to concentrate on things that matter. So to have those moments where you're taken back and you're just like, wait a minute, people still have very retrogressive thoughts. It, it honestly breaks my heart because then it means we're taking a few steps forward and then multiple steps back. But as I said, I'm a child of hope. I keep hoping. I know it gets better. I will, I will choose happiness over and over. And... <laughs> Yeah, you should too. So thank you for taking me through another episode of the In All Honesty podcast. Remember for partnership, I have my contacts in the description and to interact with me on socials, Oliver Rao on all my socials, Oliver Rao at gmail.com. I said that from my prompt because I'm wired like that right now, but also you should have every all the description you need in the in the description. My goodness. Anyway, I'm now just looping. Until next week. Bye.